It is Saturday, the 18th of November, 2023. Today, Paramore will be performing in Auckland Spark Arena on their only New Zealand show as part of their This Is Why tour. Instead of going to see them with a lot of friends and co-workers like I would have loved to, instead I'm sharing this depressing video. Ah, Paramore. To the uninitiated, they're the girl version of Fallout Boy. Or the lady equivalent to All Time Low. Or basically the female answer to any number of your favourite early 2000s emo pop punk bands. But to their fans, they are so much more. An entity unto themselves, with a history and a discography to rival the best in the genre. Myself, in an insanely coincidental example of perfect timing, after spending a couple of years actually getting into bands and collecting CDs, I realised that my collection was a bit of a sausage fest. So, on the 19th of April 2017, I decided to get into Paramore. And My Chemical Romance. Shush. I listened to all their hits and loved them immediately. But what was insanely ironic is that I would wake up the next morning and Paramore, the band I had just gotten into the day before, released their first new song in years. Hard times. Polarizing to longtime fans for the musical departure, but since I had only been a fan for like 18 hours, I had no problem accepting it as a certified banger, and later that year they would announce the After Laughter album and accompanying tour, including a ton of Australian shows and one single New Zealand show. 2017 was a wild time for me. I had the first ever signs of developing severe depression, but I was many years off figuring that one out. In 2016, my partner at the time and I had our lives radically changed by a scummy landlord and found ourselves living in the city of Wanganui. Think of it as one giant retirement village with about a dozen gangs floating around, so finding a job was insanely hard. I had struggled to find a job for over a year before finding one, then losing it after a month for what I found out later was dubious and shady reasons beyond my control. All this to say, I was in no way financially able to afford to go to a concert in Auckland. Flights, accommodation and concert tickets are expensive. At this point, I had only ever been to two concerts. Mumford and Sons in 2015 and Panic at the Disco at the start of 2017. But I so wanted to make Paramore my third ever concert. Unfortunately, there was just no way I was going to be able to afford it. But my parents, in all their love and kindness, said that for Christmas, they wouldn't buy me the ticket in case I couldn't afford to go, but they would give me the amount of money that the concert ticket would cost so that if I found a job by the end of the year and could afford the flights and accommodation, then the money they gave me for Christmas would cover the concert ticket. So I wake up Christmas morning in 2017 in Palmerston North, and my folks gift me $120. I still didn't have a job, but this at least gave me hope the concert wasn't until February, so maybe I could scrape something together? Lunchtime rolled around, and in the annual tradition for myself for many years, I said goodbye to my immediate family and began the one-hour drive to the neighbouring city of Wanganui to spend the rest of the day with my partner and her family. Now, I'm a safe driver, alright. Call me a goody two-shoes or whatever, but I think that obeying the law is a pretty good thing to practice. So I'm used to having vehicles pass me while I'm going the speed limit. Cue this stretch of road leading into a blink and you'll miss it town called Sanston. There are no cars ahead of me because, again, I'm going the speed limit unlike most people on that road, but there are a few cars behind me. Coming into Sanston, you go from 100 kilometers an hour, which is the highest speed limit we have here in New Zealand, to 50 kilometers an hour through the town. Now, for anyone who doesn't know the road rules, you're supposed to be traveling at the speed limit when you pass the speed limit sign, if the speed limit is slower than what you're currently going. On the opposite end of the rule, if you're going into a higher speed limit, then you're supposed to wait until after you pass the sign to speed up. Whatever, them's the rules. Now, I'm sure you can see where this is going. I'm coming into Sanson, no cars are ahead of me on my side of the road, but I see a red police car approaching me from the other side. Now in New Zealand, police cars aren't normally red, so it took me by surprise, but I glance at my speedometer and then my rear vision mirror. At this moment, my foot is on the brake. I am actively slowing down as I'm going past the 50k sign, but I'm not down to 50k yet. Now in that moment, a memory from my youth pops into my head where a police officer was doing a talk on drive safety and they explicitly said don't make the mistake a lot of drivers make if you see a cop car coming in the other direction don't slam on your brakes because you could cause an accident so here i am cars behind me 
a cop car coming my way, I'm actively slowing down while going past the 50 kilometers an hour speed limit zone, and I don't slam on my brakes. So, of course, the police officer flips his lights on, turns around, pulls me over, and gives me a speeding ticket. Now, to be fair, it's Christmas time, and in New Zealand we have a zero-tolerance policy for the holidays as a way to keep our nation's road toll down. So, on the lamest technicality ever, he had every right to ticket me. But also, it's Christmas Day, and you're giving some kid a ticket? This was my first ever driving offence, and I kind of just sat there quietly, dying inside. Don't know why he didn't pull over any of the numerous cars that had sped past me minutes before, but whatever. Maybe he just saw a young bloke driving a crusty old car from 1995 and thought, I'll teach this young punk a lesson. And he did teach me a lesson. A lesson I learnt back in school, but thought wouldn't apply to my adult life as well. You can be one of the most well-behaved students in the class, do everything you're supposed to, but all it takes is one technical screw-up and you get punished for it. Meanwhile, the degenerates, the bullies of the class, and the disruptors get off scot-free because the teacher just expects that behaviour of them. Yes, I did get one detention in high school. Yes, it was on a zero-tolerance day. No, it wasn't fair, but yes, it was a technicality. And yes, I'm still a little bit bitter over it. Same with this. I was taught to drive by two of the safest drivers on the planet, my father and grandfather, to the point of excessive safety. I would witness boy races, near misses, road rage, even mild crashes, and never once saw any of them get repercussions. But there I was, 22 years old, down on his luck, but a glimmer of hope in the form of $120 cash for a concert ticket I might just be able to afford to go to, safest driver on the road, letting all the speed freaks pass him, and I get pulled over for technically doing 70 in a 50 kilometers an hour zone. I was like less than 100 meters into Sanson. You can see that on the map where I pulled over. Maybe I should have just slammed on my brakes and hoped that the cars behind me wouldn't pile up into me. Oh, you want to know the real kicker? Guess how much the speeding ticket was. That's right, $120. I have no idea if that's normal or what, but yeah, I got a ticket for Christmas, just not the one I wanted. Before I move on, I just wanted to say, no, I did not argue or plead with the police officer, because at that point, everything I'd seen or heard in my life led me to believe that it was pointless to try and argue with a police officer. Plus, fair or not, technicality or not, it was technically accurate, I guess. I don't know, I, I assume that police vehicles have little dashboard scanners that can pretty accurately determine how fast an oncoming vehicle is travelling. So I just gotta trust them, I suppose. In my adult life, I still have immense respect for the local police, and I still think that obeying the law is pretty neat. Also, like a week before Paramore performed in Auckland in February 2018, I did get a job that eventually led to me seeing Fallout Boy in March. So, silver linings. Even though I lost that job too for shady reasons as soon as I got back from Fallout Boy, but you know, not going into that. Moving on. It's 2023, current year. Paramore released This Is Why, one of my personal favourite albums of the year. Not the best, but easily in my top five. After an extensive US tour, they embark on a more traditional world tour and miraculously once again announce a bunch of Australian shows and one single New Zealand show. Ha! Excellent! I thought to myself, I'll finally get to see Paramore! And what's this? Tickets go on sale at 12pm? That's perfect because my sleeping tablets have slowly stopped working and I'm usually awake at midnight these days. Ha! What luck! And to make things better, I wasn't even rostered on work that day, so awesome! I'll just set a reminder for midnight. Yep, yep. Ah, bank account looking good. Alright. Uh, oh wow, Rosemary already got their ticket through the pre-sale. Exciting! I'll just spend the day relaxing and waiting for midnight. I had the Ticketmaster website opened on my phone, constantly refreshing it to hopefully get a glimpse of how much it would cost. Well, the average ticket price in NZ has gone up a little bit over the years, but it's normally between 120 and 180 But Foo Fighters wasn't even 180 so it should be fine. The day goes on, and at about 2.30 I check social media, and I see one of my co-workers has just bought their ticket. But wait, I didn't think they went on sale until midnight. It's not even 12 p.m. Oh! Oh no! 12 p.m. isn't midnight, you idiot! Oh, whoops. Oh, well, that, that should be fine. After all, it's only been a couple of hours, and the 2018 shows didn't sell out, if I recall. So, yeah, that, yeah, that should be fine. What the f***? 
And this was my first ever time experiencing the infamous Ticketmaster situation. My dad had told me about it before, Ticketmaster jacking up prices for Taylor Swift and stuff, but I never really took it seriously because one, Taylor Swift, ooh, probably only for major artists, and two, I've never had this happen in my 20 plus concert experiences, so it must be an overseas thing, surely. 2.30pm, a mere 150 minutes after going on sale and the cheapest available ticket is $350 before booking fees. $350! Cue an hour of confusion and panic, reaching out to other people who bought tickets for the standard $150 price, searching everywhere I could online and social media. But, yep, it was just Scummy Ticketmaster doing their Scummy Ticketmaster thing. Artificially inflating the price because they were deemed as in-demand tickets. Look, I won't go into it because apparently this is something that Ticketmaster have been guilty of for years and this was just my first taste of it. Over the coming days, I saw others outraged at it, but, you know, nothing anyone could do. I thought, surely they won't sell out, but after three days, all $380 standing tickets were gone and there were, like, no resales. So, I quickly came to terms with it. I, I can't believe Ticketmaster can get away with this and apparently nobody can stop them. What a borderline scam. Oh, wait. Over the following weeks, Paramore would go on to add three additional Australian shows when they kept selling out. Meanwhile, New Zealand still had just the one show, which was actually the second show on the tour to sell out, but, oh well, nobody really cares about New Zealand, I guess. I just so happened to voice my frustration and bring this up on one of the band's posts on Instagram. Basically, I, I was polite enough, I just said, how come New Zealand doesn't get any extra shows when it's the last date on the Australia-New Zealand tour and we were one of the first to sell out? Also, screw Ticketmaster. And this was my biggest mistake so far. Cue the floodgates of obvious scammers sending me copy and paste messages that reeked of the most basic fake nonsense. Like, I had four poorly written, you want to buy tickets, yes, messages from accounts with no posts or profile pictures. There were a couple who seemed genuine. They had profiles, they were worded like actual people, and at the very least could hold up a conversation. I love replying to spam and scammers for a laugh, so I would engage with these brainless bots. But again, there were two who clearly were actual people. After some genuine back and forth, one of them made a really, really good offer to sell me one of their tickets for only 70 NZ dollars. After thinking on it for a day or so, I decided to go a little further. Now let me make this absolutely crystal clear. I am an adult who has grown up alongside the internet. I know scams. I understand scammers. I am intelligent and worldly enough to identify obvious fishy behavior. And heck, you're darn right I binge watched every Jim Browning video. But as I found out, I still underestimated scammers. I knew that no matter what, there was no way I would be able to 100% tell that this person was legit or not. So I made the choice that no matter what, I would trust him. And up until this point, there were no red flags, just a person looking to sell their ticket, and admittedly, I was desperate. I knew that eventually there would have to be a transaction, so I told myself I was going to trust this man until either I got my ticket or until a red flag popped up. And so, yeah, this dude scammed me out of $140. Now, I can imagine as a viewer, I would want to know every little detail, but I honestly can't be bothered. So let me just give you the basics. It was my first time using PayPal as an app, so I didn't quite know what I was doing, but they were kind enough to talk me through it. He had already shown me legit screenshots of the ticket from Ticketmaster and the transfer process page. So eventually the time came to send him money, and that was when the flag started popping up. At the time, I was literally walking to the cinema to meet up with one of my best friends to see the new TMNT movie, and I really wanted to surprise him with a, guess what, I'm coming to see Paramore 2! So I transfer this guy the money. Then he says that because of currency conversion, he only got half of what he asked for, but he would front the loss. On one hand, I felt bad because, yeah, if he was legit, then he could be selling the ticket for half or even a quarter of what he paid for it. 
But also, why the heck would you sell an NZ ticket for an NZ show and not specify you weren't looking for NZ dollars? Well, he sent another screenshot showing that there was a small one-off resale fee that he would like me to pay for. Again, I knew reselling your ticket on Ticketmaster had a fee to it. But because I was literally walking to the cinema, I didn't have time to read the screenshot he sent. And because I felt bad that he received half of what he was hoping for, I made another transaction to cover the transfer fee. Because again, I had made the decision to trust him, and if he was legit, then he would be at a bigger loss than I was. Then, as I walked into the theater, he asked for a third payment, with another screenshot showing another payment required. And that was it. I met up with my friends, I told them what had happened, then sat reading the last two screenshots filled with spelling errors and obvious lies. I sent the guy a voice message essentially saying, hey, this isn't right, I know there is no third fee, and that you even said you would front the loss, so if you're legit, then please just send me the concert ticket I paid for. Then the asshole had the gall to send me a video saying, oh, he's legit, he's just trying to send me a ticket. So I had to sit there through an incredibly average Ninja Turtles movie with my dear friend who I hadn't seen for ages trying but failing to concentrate on the film when really all I could think about was that I, a tech-savvy adult who could spot a scammer from a mile away, just got scammed. This thoughtless thug thoroughly thwarted my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles viewing experience and drove me to one of the darkest places I had ever been. Thank goodness for friends and family. This was after the, the 10 birthdays and 10 years video, by the way, so I was already not in a great mindset. To this absolute shit stain of a human being, I hope you stub your toe, bite your tongue, and get dirt in your eye all on the same day, you horrid, horrid man. Hey, my name's Roger, and I am trying to sell you a ticket. I have to interject real quick, because it's 11 p.m., the night before this video goes up while I'm editing and for the last hour I haven't edited anything because I've been in a spiral because I found him. I found the guy that scammed me. I found a good dozen of his accounts, most of which have been deleted but are still up, just vacant. But some of them are still there and presumably still being used to this day to scam people who are stupid enough to, to fall for it like I was. But more shockingly, his actual account, Roger Hood's actual account, with their partner and friends and everything and actual posts, and it's insane. Like I'd, I have no idea what to do. Like, there's nothing I can do. But just the fact that this person who scammed me out of so much money just has not their own account just up on the internet like it's nothing, and I somehow couldn't find it when he scammed me when it happened, and yet yeah, it's just there now. I, I, I don't know what to do. So I have officially missed out on seeing Paramore. Three times. Epilogue. I contacted PayPal immediately. And while the woman on the phone was super helpful and assured me they'd do everything they can for me, they've yet to get in contact with me since. I never had any expectations for getting my money back. I just wanted to report all of his fraudulent accounts and hopefully make sure he loses that money. I contacted my bank straight away as well, and oh my goodness, what a cluster fudge. Honestly, I wish my bank never told me that they might be able to get my money back, because it has since been two months of headaches and just the dumbest email consultations. I sent obvious, objective, clear-as-day proof to both PayPal, who acted immediately, and my bank that I had just been scammed, and it's like my case manager hasn't even read it. Like, I got an email saying I needed to provide proof of cancellation. What? And if I didn't do that by a certain date, then they would consider the case closed. I replied immediately. Nothing. I replied several more times. Nothing. I made phone calls and left messages. Nothing. Until the day after they said they would close my case when they called me asking for proof of cancellation. Which I just reiterated over and over again. No, it was a scam. No, there was no exchange of services. It was a scam. No, I can't reach out to the other party because their Instagram was deleted because they were an obvious scammer. Just the most oblivious individual I've had the displeasure of communicating with. Oh, and get this. 
Last week I got an email saying, Because the concert isn't until November 18th, we have to wait until after this date to proceed. What? Again, I replied immediately with a simple, Why? What sense does that make? To which I got no reply. I never believed I would get my money back, but damn it, my bank are giving me false hope. Sure, I could really use the money, because work hasn't been going great lately, but come on, I just wanted to get my money out of the hands of the dirtbag who scammed me of it. In conclusion, drive obnoxiously safe. Do everything in your power to sign up for official artist pre-sales. Screw this guy. Screw Ticketmaster, and just remember, no matter how smart you think you are, you are still susceptible to a scam. It's not always some foreign voice on a crackly phone line telling you your license is expired. Also, epilogue to the epilogue, remember how I said that there were originally two people messaging me on Instagram wanting to sell their tickets who actually seemed legit? Well, the other lady, who I was starting to trust, who had a full account with posts and history and everything, yeah, that was deleted too. And since mid-September, I have recorded 24 accounts reaching out to me asking if I was still interested in buying a Paramore ticket, and 18 of those accounts have since been deleted. Stay safe out there, folks.